Thank you for joining us for the Barbados Today Evening News for Thursday, February 1st. I am Marie Claire Williams. The Institute of Chartered Accountants of Barbados is raising concern over what it says is a worrying trend in the continued decline in foreign reserves. ICAB was responding to the report from Governor of the Central Bank, Clevenston Haynes, yesterday. At the time, he said that the reserves are now at a six weeks level and not at the recommended 12 weeks. The, low, the body says the low level of reserves places Barbados in an increasingly vulnerable position to external economic shocks, such as the increase in oil prices. ICAB noted, however, that the reduction in the fiscal deficit is a good sign, but said that arrears owed by government in the form of tax refunds and payments to suppliers of goods and services are still a problem. It says there is need to implement measures to increase investor confidence and boost productivity. ICAB is also recommending that government enter into negotiations with a suitable multilateral agency for a loan that will provide security to the foreign reserves and give a short-term reduction in interest payments. The former governor of the central bank, Dr. Delisle Worrell, is lamenting lost investment opportunities in Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean due to excessive bureaucracy. Delivering the inaugural Confucius Lecture at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill campus last night, Dr. Worrell said there is no shortage of investor interest in the Caribbean, especially from Chinese companies. But he says they are too often frustrated by red tape. The region is awash with proposals to invest in new tourist accommodation, infrastructure, telecommunications, business services, construction, and other areas that are seen as profitable. Investor interest comes from private international sources as well as from regional and international institutions. What slows and often chokes off investment altogether is the inefficiency of Caribbean bureaucracies. The Caribbean countries are now all in the lower rankings of the Global Competitiveness Report and the Doing Business Report. And most Caribbeans, Caribbean countries' external debt is now rated below investment grade. For many international investors, projects in the Caribbean that would otherwise have been profitable are no longer viable once risk premiums are factored in. Concerns this evening that there are too many electrical accidents, some of which result in loss of life. The Chief Labor Officer, Victor Felix, was addressing the Occupation, Safety and Health section of the Labor Department earlier today. He said several categories of workers are at risk of such accidents and stressed the need for employers to ensure their staff are operating in a safe environment. Felix also said a subcommittee has been established to review existing arrangements relating to situations which would expose individuals to power lines. This information is to be evaluated to determine if adequate arrangements are currently in place to protect persons other than employees of utility companies from getting into close proximity to power lines. And that is not to say that NACOR is not interested in persons employed in electricity, the, the power companies. But what we are saying here is that um, the power companies, we can work with them um, as a unit. And, and what's more, it, it, the, we can't complain in terms of the, the record of our, our power company. In, um, with regard to um, safety. Retired Chief Justice Sir David Simmons says senior public officers should leave their private professional practices when taking up appointments in the public service. Sir David, who is also the chairman of the Integrity Commission of the Turks and Caicos Islands, told the Rotary Club of Barbados last night that holding public office is a full-time job. He cited principles on standards of public life set out by a British parliamentary committee as the model to be followed. The first principle of public life is selflessness. This will resonate with you because it is part of your uh, mantra. And this is how it is expressed in the Nolan Report. Holders of public office should act solely in terms of the public interest. Full stop, unquote. 
implicit in that description is that being a minister is a full-time occupation. That is why people who practice a profession must relinquish it on appointment to ministerial office. You have to give it up. You cannot purport to practice your private profession and at the same time exercise public office. These are the standards to which ministers, MPs, public officials and heads of statutory boards are to be held and to which they should aspire. Ideally, as I indicated, these standards should be set out and incorporated in a more expansive code of conduct which sets out imperatives and prescriptions. But I trust that it is obvious now that the concept of integrity in public life embodies much more than just honesty or incorruptibility. There's regional and international news after this short break. Thank you for staying with us. We're back with news from the region. Guyana's President David Granger is hoping that the ongoing border dispute with Venezuela will soon be heard before the International Court of Justice. Granger says the protracted dispute has impacted on development of several regions in his country. We get the details from Capital News in Georgetown. Given that the border controversy between Guyana and Venezuela has been referred to the International Court of Justice, the ICJ, the president said on Wednesday that Guyana has hopes that the matter will be heard as soon as possible. We are anxious to have this matter go before the court as quickly as possible. It is not in our hands. The court, of course, like any court, has um, procedures and we have to abide by those procedures. But I'm happy that for the first time since independence we have reached this far. And I'm very glad that the, the entire country is united behind this move. We're very confident that the award of the tribunal in 1899 will be vindicated. Overall, the president feels the move is a good one for Guyana. So we are confident that this will contribute to our development. It will contribute to the confidence investors have in coming to Guyana and will contribute to the, uh, the, the, the infrastructural development that we have um, um, engaged other countries with, you know, Brazil and China. They would like to know that they're operating in a safe region of Canada that is not on the claim. Equally, um, our maritime space, as you know, um, is, the, is the zone of extensive petroleum exploration, successful exploration. The president explained that the controversy has bedeviled relations between the countries and has actually stymied development in four regions. Burima Waini, the Pataro Sipuruni, to some extent the, um, you know, the Rupununi and also uh, Kuyuni Mazaruni, those four regions have uh, had their development obstructed because of Venezuelan objections. On the international scene, the White House was today working to clear the release of a secret Republican memo alleging FBI bias, bias against President Donald Trump in its Russia probe. The move would be in complete disregard of a warning from the top law enforcement agency. The four-page document was crafted by Republican members of the House of Representatives Intelligence Committee and a senior White House official says it will be made public tomorrow. We get more in this Reuters report. Despite a rare public rebuke from the FBI over the accuracy of a top-secret memo alleging anti-Trump bias within the Justice Department, plus growing alarm from Democrats and some Republicans about its release, the Trump administration on Thursday appears close to revealing it to the public. 
The four-page document written by Republican Representative Devin Nunes of the House Intelligence Committee has become a lightning rod in a bitter partisan fight. And on late Wednesday, Adam Schiff, the Intelligence Committee's ranking Democrat, said Nunes had sent a version of the memo to the White House that was, quote, materially altered and therefore not approved for release. The goal of it is to provide a misleading impression to the country that benefits the president, that protects the president, that casts doubt on the investigation in the FBI. In a statement issued Thursday, House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi called on House Speaker Paul Ryan to remove Nunes immediately from his position as chairman of the committee, calling his actions deliberately dishonest. Republican Senator John Thune told reporters at an annual GOP retreat that House Republicans needed to carefully consider what law enforcement says about how releasing the memo, quote, bears on our national security. Republicans voted to release the memo on Monday, but DOJ officials said releasing it could jeopardize classified information. Meanwhile, the special counsel's investigation into Russian meddling and possible collusion by Trump's campaign is pressing on. According to the New York Times, Robert Mueller has informed President Trump that a statement drafted on Air Force One in response to questions about Donald Jr.'s Trump Tower meeting with Russians is among the things he would like to discuss with the president in an interview. That's news this evening. Remember, there's more on our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also find us on Mix 96.9 FM. I am Marie Claire Williams. Good evening.